doesn't say in awe of what you do. And the way you meet our needs, deeming us worthy enough to come into a presence of, of, of a sinful man, filthy as dirty rags. You said, no, I love you anyway. So Lord, we ask that you have your way for the rest of this service. I ask that you just continue blessing us, touching the hearts of the individuals watching and in the building. You're a mighty God, a wonderful God. You are Yahweh, El Shaddai, Adonai, Elohim, El Elyon, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sikhanu, the I that the I am that I am, the beginning and the end, the lily of the valley. So Lord, we ask that you have your way. In Jesus' precious, precious name, amen and amen. Before you see this, I high five with five people and say, God is good. You see, this, this, when, I, when I hit just the word, the song Yahweh, and I was listening, uh, somebody sent me on Instagram. I'm trying to remember who sent it to me so I can give him a shout out. I'm Gene, Gene, you might have sent it to me. And um, they were explaining what Yahweh means. And in the, the Jewish language, there's no E and the A. And it's more of a breathing sound. And when you look at it, the girl was saying that, that, that it is, uh, and they took it back to your first breath. You're saying Yahweh. And she said, even into your last breath, you're saying Yahweh. So when I hear that Yahweh, man, it just, it just does something in my spirit. I just, you know, and then the way that Josh and, and, and it, uh, Darwin, and they sing, I'm like, man, I can, we can stay in that place all day, all day. But we need these moments, right? We need these moments because some, these are the moments that I believe ministers to us differently. The word is good, right? The, the message from the, 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 the minister on stage is good, but there's something when you are in a direct connection, like just talking to God yourself. You know, and, and I love it because the scriptures start popping up in my head and, and it's like, you know, it's, all these things are going on. So he's, as he's, he, I'm asking, looking for answers and a scripture pops up and I'm saying, Yahweh. And another scripture pops up and I said, wow, above the, and not beneath. Another scripture, I, I, I ask and you shall receive. Another scripture, and I'm like, wow, God, you're amazing. So in the 20 minutes that I have left, Yeah, right. From that worship, then taking all the time, I'm definitely going to get uh, taken to the principal's office. <laughs> but real quick, uh, side note, church, saints. People have been asking me, they say, Pastor Jamar, you see what's going on in Israel, right? And they say, what, do you, what, what is Dr. Bernard saying? I said, I don't know what Dr. Bernard is saying because I haven't spoken to him yet. But I'll tell you what Jamal Bernard is seeing. And I, I don't take it lightly that it's actually 50 years from the war of Yom Kippur to the date, 1973 to 2023. And when you look at the, 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 the what's going gone, the only thing I, 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 I thought about because America went through some turmoil because in 1950s, I mean, 1970s, there was a lot going on. You had the Vietnam War, right? You had everything that was happening in, in, in Israel. And what we saw was the, 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 the economy of America shifting. And I said, okay, Lord, what, if I do say anything, what do I need to say? Number one, pray. And people say, oh, you're always saying pray, but I'm going to give you some things to pray for. Pray for understanding. 
so that you can understand what's happening. Because think about this. Anything that's happening in the physical realm, something's going on in the spiritual realm. I was reading Daniel the other day. I said, Lord, what happened in the world when the angels were fighting? He said, Daniel, I, I had the answer, but I had to contend a little. So pray for understanding. Say, okay, Lord, what is happening spiritually? Here it is. We are filled. The revival is happening here at CCC. So what is happening spiritually? Number two, pray for So one understanding, number two. Pray for the turmoil in the Middle East, the Gaza Strip. There's a lot of death happening. Number three, pray for America. Pray for America because the last time this happened, we had issues. To the point where Saudi Arabia put embargoes on oil coming over here to America. And we already have oil issues because of what's going on in Russia. So think about it. So you had the Vietnam War, then the War of Yom Kippur. Now we have the Ukraine war that America is not involved in. And now we have another war 50 years later. Something's happening. So what I say is, heed my warning, decrease your spending on unnecessary things and save. Instead of going to the club Friday night, Sunday, Saturday night, pick a night. <laughs> Instead of having Hulu and Netflix, pick one of them. Get the candles out, husbands. Put the kids to bed and have day night at home. I'm telling you, decrease spending on unnecessary things and save. But at the same time, don't be afraid to make smart financial decisions. So this is what the Lord, I, I believe, it, it, it has given me. And even in a time as this, if you're smart, be prepared to prosper. So this is what I believe is going to be happening. Decrease your spending and start saving. And why saving? Because you're gonna, you're gonna, you need to be prepared for opportunities that's going to come along, that you can be a part of, that's going to help bless you so that you can be out there in the world being a blessing to others. Amen? Amen. So that's, that's the start. So I got 17 minutes. Uh, I'm excited about today. Today, we, you know, we, we're, we're trying to do some new things. And, you know, we got the um, our, our little bit of CC swag. Supporting Breast Cancer Awareness Sunday. That's, that's today. But it's the whole bunch, so we'll be supporting it and uh, uh, excited. We have some swag. So I'm giving this away, but we have it in a bookstore. So if you want to support on the back, it says from Deuteronomy 31.6, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. So whose birthday is today? No? Okay, well, how, how do you want me to do this? Wait, okay, okay. People, people, people. We got a, I got a birthday right there. My sister. Come on up. It's not your birthday today. Come on. You got to sing when you come up here, though. Uh, hey! <laughs> well, you got to get to see your wife, because I don't know. I'm going to see about another size for you. All right. <laughs> Yeah. My sister, wait, the one in the gray. Wait, don't, don't, don't. The one in the gray. Here you go, my sister. 
and you looking like, man, I, I missed out. So I got this special edition. You wear this color? She said, yes. We want to see you in this next Sunday. You going to be here next Sunday? All right. So here. So this is, we don't have this in the bookstore, so don't ask for it. <laughs> You're welcome. Yay! <laughs> so the shirts are going to be uh, uh, in the bookstore for sale. Um, I don't know how much. They'll let you know. I had a post it, but it's gone. Amen, church? All right, so real quick, we're going to get into the word, 14 minutes. Um, I know, I know. I have a whole introduction, but I'm going to skip the introduction, skip, uh, get, get into some of this. Let's go to Job chapter uh, 1, verse 1. Let's go to Job chapter 1, verse 1. We're reading out a message Bible. I'm going to read some of the story, and then I'm going to go into Jamalism. Is that all right for the sake of time? It says, a man devoted to God. Job was a man who lived in us. He was honest inside and out. A man of his word. Well, this is a good um, message. Who was totally devoted to God. Man, this, he just sets the tone for manhood. A man who lived in us, he was an honest inside and out, a man of his word. Men, take notes. He was totally devoted to God, hated evil with a passion, not just hated it, but with a passion. He had seven sons, three daughters. He was also very wealthy, 7,000 head of sheep. He was balling. That's that Arab money. Three thousand camels, five hundred teams of oxen, five hundred donkeys, and a huge staff of servants. The most influential man in all the East. His sons used to make uh, take turns hosting parties in the homes, always inviting their three sisters to join them in their merrymaking. When the parties were over, Job would get up early in the morning and sacrifice a burnt offering for each of his children, thinking maybe <laughs> one of them sinned by defying God inwardly. Jacob made a habit of this sacrificial atonement just in case they sin. So I'm setting up the tone for the message today. The message for today is the power of perseverance. So here is Job. Job is living life. Things are good. He probably walked outside. I'm picturing Job in his house, right? And he goes outside early morning, Cafe Bustelo, <laughs> Cafe Con Leche, opens the doors and just marvels. He's probably saying to himself, Yahweh. Because think he was devoted to God. And he's looking and he's observing. And here it is, he's up on life. Things are going good. And all of a sudden, the devil starts asking about him. And I said, Lord, I'm reading this. I said, I want that part, but the, the, the rest of the, 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 the text, I don't want. The devil started asking about him. And for some of you in here today, Somebody is making some noise about your relationship with God. Somebody is upset at the success of your relationship with God. Somebody is having a problem, and they're looking for your downfall. So here's Job. All those oxen he had, dead. His children, dead. The sheep, dead. The goats, dead. The house, destroyed. And he went from the most influential 
individual to the bottom of the bottom. And to the point where he even had his wife. Husbands, don't look at your wives right now. He even had his wife saying, why don't you just die and curse God? Look at you, suffering. Give up. Quit. That's what caused you to, to get into the problem you got into, this Jamalism. Because remember, he got stricken with boils and, 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 and sicknesses. So it wasn't just his, his wealth, his family, but he personally went through some things. And I said, man, but Job never quit. So say, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. so you better not quit. Yeah. See, because this biblical story of Job illustrates perseverance. Job was a righteous man who, who faced immense suffering and loss, including the death of his children, destruction of his property, and a severe illness. Despite the hardship, and he persevered in his faith and did not curse God. To the end, his perseverance was rewarded. And he was blessed even more than before. So for sake of time, we're going to go through this real quick. Number one, number one. The first key is to understand the power of perseverance. Walter Elliott said it this way. He said, perseverance is not a long race. It is many short races, one after the other. So we got to acknowledge the incredible power of perseverance. It is not about enduring one single long struggle but rather about constantly overcoming challenges one step at a time. So the power of perseverance is never quitting. Show your neighbor say, neighbor, like Forrest Gump said, it happens. I'm out, I'm out. I'll extend this to you one Sunday that I'm, I'm going to be back here. Number two, the strength to overcome. The strength to overcome. So number one, power of per our perseverance. Number two, the strength to, to overcome. Our greatest glory is not never failing, but in rising every time we fall. I don't know who said that, but it was a good quote. Our greatest glory is not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. So perseverance is about finding the strength to rise every time life knocks you down. It's about finding the strength to rise every time life knocks you down. It is a testament to resilience and a demonstration Showing that setbacks are just opportunities to come back stronger. Setbacks are only opportunities to come back stronger. Somebody asked me, and, and, and we were talking. I, was, I just came back from Virginia. I was ministering Friday night at the conference, and then we did a staff leadership development uh, Saturday morning. And they said, let me ask you a question, Pastor Jamal. How is he doing? I said, CCC is doing great. They said, why? I said, because we're resilient people. They said, well, what's the, what's the marks of resilience? They said, one, know that stuff happens. The struggle is real. So we at CCC, we know that something's going to happen. But God. Come on, somebody say, but God. But God. Yahweh! Yahweh! Yeah. Yes! <laughs> And number two, we know what to focus on. They said a person who focuses on the negative will not be able to be strong. They will not be able to be resilient. They will not be able to bounce back. But we focus on the positive. So, for us, a setback is a setup for the comeback. So number three, we got five minutes. So number one, say it with me. Number one, the power. 
Come on, say it again. Number one. No, you got. Don't say number one with me. Tell me what. <laughs> This is, this is what I get for having a rush to a message, right? Okay, see, see, what is number one? Number two? And number three, you ready? The patience of perseverance. The patience of perseverance. What do I mean by that? Uh, Elizabeth George said it this way. Perseverance is not a passive submission to circumstances. Perseverance is not a passive submission to circumstances. It is a strong and active response to the difficult events of our life. So perseverance is not passive. Perseverance is a strong response to the setbacks, to the obstacles. So perseverance isn't a passive surrender to life's challenges. It is an active response it requires patience, though. The belief that in time, our efforts will bear fruit. It requires patience. And the belief that in time, our efforts will bear fruit. It requires patience. Because we believe that in due time, this too shall pass. So, saints, number one is? Number two is? And number three is? And number four? The rewards of perseverance. There's a reward. Say to your neighbor, say neighbor. I don't know if you know this, but there's a reward with perseverance. I don't know who said this. I used to be finding these quotes. Perseverance, secret of all triumphs. Perseverance is a secret of all triumphs. And what do I mean by that triumph? my dear brothers and sisters, is born out of perseverance. I said it again, triumph is born out of perseverance. It's the secret ingredient to achieve our goals and dreams. What's the secret ingredient? Perseverance. What's the secret ingredient? Say it in, find a new neighbor. Say, new neighbor. New neighbor. Perseverance, perseverance is the secret sauce. See, when we persevere, we unlock the doors to success that were once hidden from us. When we persevere, we unlock the doors of success that was once hidden from us. And I got a lot more to talk about. So, number one, saints. Okay, I can hear you from the balcony. What's number one? Number two. Number three, number four, and number five, the endurance of faith. Endurance of faith. Because that's what's tested. Remember, doubt comes in when you question the nature and or character of the thing you're believing in. So when you're hit with a challenge, especially after reading a scripture that starts to challenge what you read, you start going through a process of questioning. Okay, Lord, I know what your word says, but right now this is what reality is presenting. So there's a, 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 a faith tension that you have. That's what I love what my dad said. He said, look, he said, yeah, it's easy to love somebody, but last week he was talking about how, how, how you know, to love your enemies. 
So faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Martin Luther King Jr. Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Remember that perseverance often requires faith. Faith in yourself, faith in your purpose, and faith in God. Even when the path ahead is unclear, taking that first step with faith is the essence of perseverance. Want me to repeat that? Even when the path ahead is unclear, taking the first step with faith is the essence of perseverance. There was a song Man, I, it was a Kurt Franklin song. It was a good song, too. I'm trying to find it. I, don't worry, it was before he started doing that. <laughs> Forgive me, Saints. <laughs> All right. It's a great song, but in closing. <laughs> Let me see, what time the Jets are playing? Yeah, I still support them. It hurts. In closing, let us reflect on these quotes and the profound wisdom they offer about perseverance. May we find strength in the knowledge that with perseverance, we can overcome an obstacle, reach our goals, and ultimately achieve triumph in our lives. With perseverance. And you say, Pastor Jamal, why is this the message for today? Because I had a whole nother message. And I was in my closet and I said, Lord, you know, we're, we're celebrating, um, well, we're not celebrating, but we're acknowledging, uh, we're celebrating the, the, the successful stories of individuals who overcame the obstacles. We're celebrating the individuals that still push through in spite of when it comes to breast cancer. I said, Lord, so I, I, I need to know what is it that you want me as your tool to say? And all I kept on hearing was perseverance. Don't quit. Perseverance. Things will happen. Perseverance. Obstacles will present themselves. Perseverance. Don't quit. Perseverance. And that's all I heard. And if this message is a message that's just to encourage you to say, no, I will persevere because my perseverance becomes a testimony for God to use me. This message might become the story of my perseverance to use me to stand in the gap for somebody. To help carry them to the next stage in life. Or even if you lost somebody dealing with this wretched thing called cancer. You persevered. Because you didn't allow it to stop your life. You continued the legacy. You continued the story. So I'm here to tell you. Saints, don't quit. Saints, persevere. Because people are watching how you handle situations and circumstances. Let's stand to our feet. Yahweh! 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 Come on, I'm about to get on these keys. Where's, where's, where's the... Yahweh! The most high God, the most high God. As the minister comes up to lead us in altar call, 
I pray that you got something out of this simple message. I apologize that I had to condense it. Understand the power of perseverance. I'm telling you, there's something that happens when you come out of your furnace. There's a ministry message that comes that happens, that's developed and, and utilized by God when you come out of your furnace. So I'm turning it over to Minister Melissa. Yahweh. All right? Don't forget it. Carry it with you. Every time you breathe, as he, say, as he stated, it's the breath of God. That's why the scriptures actually declares to let everything that have breath. We're wired to worship him. We're wired to praise him. Now, for those of us that actually know him personally, it sounds different, right? When we call out Yahweh. But there are some people in here today who may not know him personally. You have not accepted him into your heart as Lord and Savior. If that's you, I see everybody standing right now. So I'm going to ask for those of you that have not actually accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. If you could just raise your hand or wave your hand because we want to pray for you. We don't want you to leave here and not be able to know him for yourself. I see that hand. Hallelujah. See, Jesus will leave the 99 and he will attend to the one. So even if there is one, is there anybody up in the top? I can't see. Mm -hmm. I got glasses and I still can. Glasses are only for words, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's turn our prayers to the, the young man. Could you come up to the altar for me, please? Yes, sir. Yes. You see, heaven is rejoicing. There's a party going on in heaven because of one. We're so glad you decided to come. God's love for you is so great. There's a young man that's standing behind you in support. For those of us that know how to intercede, let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord preserved your life so that you could be here right now, so that you could change the course that you're on and align yourself and step in his, in, with his spirit. The Lord has so many promises for you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins? Do you believe that he rose again? And he said, if you confess that with your mouth and believe in your heart that you are saved, Jesus came just for you. And as we've been calling out Yahweh, the most high God, I pray now for you. Come on, pray, extend your, extend your faith. Come on, we're not, we're not just spectators. We're praying for you. I don't know what your path has looked like over the past couple of years. But it doesn't matter as much as it does that God has been walking with you. It's been hard. But God's love for you is so great. And when the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the word says that God will lift up a standard against the enemy. The enemy of your soul that's been trying to steal you from God's hands for a very long time for, for since you were a teenager uh-huh yeah but I pray right now come on let's pray we're not just observing hallelujah I pray right now that you would take courage and believe him for the impossible that God will open up the doors that you need open and that he will show you his love and kindness in a very special way. 
I pray that as the as heaven is rejoicing for this moment right here and right now that you will go and tell somebody about Yahweh something that you heard today or something that you remembered because God is restoring your memory and we speak shalom shalom to you shalom wholeness shalom God's intentions for your life hallelujah may the next time you come back here you come back and you bring somebody else to let them know that God is here he's in the building and you need to be here too amen in Jesus name hallelujah let's say something good no we're not saying nothing good <laughs> I like where you were going but last announcement I did forget you remember I didn't have my post it men's congratulations Congratulations. <laughs> uh, today's the last day to register for the men's love up uh, for I used to be level up by October 14th. Oh, next Saturday. Yeah, next Saturday. So if you're a man and uh, wives, give them that little nudge right? you ready to go level up. Right? You know, sign up to level up so you can level up. All right? Amen. So as we leave this place, but never God's presence, let's say, Jesus is Lord. Period. We believe it, we proclaim it, and we're seeing it come to pass. God bless you. Have an amazing week in the Lord. Family, thank you so much for watching CCC's YouTube channel. If you feel what you just experienced impacted your life in any way, we encourage you to like, subscribe, and share this video with others so we can fulfill our mission in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. We welcome you to check out some of our other videos. Also, make sure to click the notification bell so you are the first to know when we post a new one. Our praise and worship team brings us a powerful and dynamic live worship experience every Sunday. And trust me and Cameron when I say, you do not want to miss it. Streaming times are in the description box below. And if you are looking for any other information about what's happening here at CCC, visit www.cccinfo.org. We hope to see you next Sunday, but for now, continue to have a blessed week in the Lord.